Okay. Hello everyone, my name is Brett, and sometimes I wear a beret, and I love foam-flinging entertainment. When I first got into the hobby as a teenager, I loved finding different types of it online. And because there are so many different ways to enjoy toy blasters, there are so many different types of entertainment that people have created and continue to create like right here on YouTube. You've got videos with heavy after effects to simulate something more realistic, staged gameplay with first person views and crazy environments, footage from actual Nerf games and anything else you can think of. Depending on your age, you might find some types more cringy than others, but at least they're trying their best, at least they're willing to put themselves out there and create something. But what has Nerf put out in the past? Well. Quite a lot, actually. Dart Tag League and Championship of 2009, Funnier Die Sketches, Dude Perfect Challenges, Animated Zombie Strike Stories, Firing Darts in Slow Motion, Nerf Nation Show with Zach King, The Nerf Ultra One Championship, please don't make me talk about that one. Nerf's catalog of foam flinging entertainment is extensive and frankly, all over the place. And while not all of it may appeal to you, it is interesting to see what they put out as an entertainment slash marketing strategy. Yeah, I should clarify. I get that all of this content exists to sell toys. The goal of a toy company is to sell toys. I'm not saying that's a bad thing, I'm just saying that's what it is. And it doesn't have to be a bad thing. If they make stuff that's entertaining for me to watch and I can get invested in it, I see no problem with that. If it's very heartless, soulless marketing that is clearly trying to push a product and nothing else, then I'm not gonna be on board with it. And I think most of us will see right through and not really be interested or even entertained. Even creators not affiliated with Nerf who use Nerf blasters or products in their content inadvertently advertise for Nerf. So I have to believe it isn't all heartless marketing because technically then this video would count. And I swear I'm not, that's not the point of this. And I think some of those previous Nerf videos I mentioned do qualify as entertainment for me because I've enjoyed watching them and there's nothing wrong with that. But we're not here today to talk about the ones that worked. We're here today to talk about the one that did not work. And that is Nerf House. Nerf House premiered in March 2020 on YouTube and on Instagram from Nerf Official and one of the series stars, Julian Edelman's channel. The description from Hasbro Newsroom is as follows. Nerf has launched a five-part video series called Nerf House, featuring renowned athletes including Julian Edelman, Juju Smith-Schuster, Jamal Adams, Joe Burrow, Christian McCaffrey, and the new Nerf Ultra 2 Blaster, living under one roof and learning the true meaning of it's Nerf or nothing. Oh, I bet. And the Ultra 2 is a character now. Cool. Does it talk? Does it also play for the NFL? In the Nerf House, the only rule is that there are no rules. Eh, okay, maybe a few rules. You can check out episode one on Julian Edelman's IGTV with new episodes launching every Thursday. Pretty vague overall, other than it's a five part series featuring five NFL stars and the Nerf Ultra 2. I mentioned this was posted on YouTube under both Julian and Nerf's channel because for the five of you saying, Brett, uh, Nerf's YouTube channel is marked as for kids, uh, so you can't be critical of this series. Well, Julian's channel isn't marked that way. The only reason that Nerf Official is marked as a Ford Kids channel is because they had a little incident not too long ago. You may have heard of it before. The series is intended for all audiences and I will be judging it as such. But before I dive any deeper into these videos, I would like to establish a couple of things. Number one, I have nothing against the five NFL players who are starring in Nerf House. They seem like genuinely good people and I'm sure they're having the time of their life doing this. I mean, who wouldn't want to be a part of a Nerf video, like just playing with blasters and probably getting paid. I have no idea how much input they had for some of their lines or the script overall, so I'll reserve judgment on that. But again, I have nothing against these guys. They seem like genuinely good dudes living the best life. I'm just jealous, right? Second thing is that this is clearly a professional filmmaking job and it is not comparable to a standard YouTube video uh, like you're watching right now. I understand that making this kind of a production work requires a lot more planning, a lot more scripting. Every piece coming together is a completely different scenario and it has a lot less creative control than just me sitting in front of something and making a video for YouTube. I get to say whatever goes into this video. Uh, again, the athletes may not have too much control. Even the people who are on set may not have had control over certain aspects. I have no idea how it came to be, but I respect the people who put the effort in to make it look as good as it does because I can't do that. I'll never be able to do that, quite frankly. No offense to the people who were in it, no offense to the people who worked on it. But with that said, I, I do need to talk about this a little bit more because 
there are five episodes as mentioned in Nerf House and I came up with five general points to kind of summarize my main critiques. And here we go. Point number one, the house is barely used. The series is called Nerf House. It starts and ends with a static shot of a large, fancy house. Why do I feel like we never get to see the full potential of this house? We see the outside a few times, so I have no reason to doubt that they are actually on location, but we almost always stay in one room for the particular skit. So if you told me that this was actually filmed in separate sets and just pieced together, I don't know, I, I may actually take you up on that conspiracy theory. The most you see of the house is in episode five, which is a behind the scenes episode, so that shouldn't even count. Imagine you have a giant house at your disposal with a few friends and endless blasters and darts. What's the first thing you think of? No, seriously, not a trick question. What's the first thing you would think to do in that situation? What's that? Have a major full-scale house battle? Congratulations, you're right. And you have more creativity than Nerf House does because they never do that. They never do anything that would actually use the maze of rooms that the house clearly has to offer, even the outside. Is it really that hard to come up with fun nerf related ideas for a giant house? Team deathmatch, zombies, capture the flag? I mean, think about it. You have all this room at your disposal. Wouldn't those be interesting to see? I know they'd be interesting to see. Why? Because I've already seen them right here on YouTube. Technically, there is nerf and technically, there is a house. So the title Nerf House is not a complete lie. No, instead it's just the bare minimum. Point number two, episodes are short. This isn't necessarily a bad thing or an uncommon thing for Nerf videos, but it's true. Nerf House episodes are pretty freaking short. They average between two to four minutes with episode five being the one exception at four minutes and 14 seconds. In total, these five episodes are 15 minutes and 12 seconds. And I'm willing to bet that this video that you're watching right now is going to end up being longer than that. Not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing, it just is what it is. But that total should come with an asterisk because if you're looking for original Nerf House content and not fluff, we have to take some stuff out. Each episode has the same introduction that's about 30 seconds, an ad anywhere from 15 to 30 seconds, and then typically a next episode teaser uh, around 20 seconds. Now, since the teasers almost never pan out, they never go anywhere, I'll include that with original Nerf House content. Despite these episodes appearing to be short, they're actually even shorter. And so the real total for all five of these episodes is closer to 11 minutes. Now this breakdown may seem unnecessary because obviously quality is more important than quantity. These may be the most important videos you've ever seen in your life, ever. Well, fortunately every other point I'm talking about quality. So in this case, I am talking about quantity. Uh, the reason that the duration of these videos bugs me so much is because Nerf made a big deal about this series. They got a full camera crew, an expensive location, uh, NFL players, um, to bring us the pinnacle of foam flinging entertainment? And this is it? How many hours? How many days did it take you to film just to get 11 to 15 minutes? I don't know the budget of Nerf House, but if it was my money, I would be really disappointed with only getting this much out of it. Maybe there is more footage they're waiting to release, or maybe it really just was filmed in a day, eight hours. I may never actually know the answer. But what we've got feels so limited that it's impossible for me to get invested in this series. Uh, there's not enough for me here to feel like I know anything about these guys outside of their favorite blasters. And actually that's, I don't even think I know that one. The first time I watched these videos, I was genuinely surprised that episode five was a behind the scenes episode. And then it just ends. And I was like, oh, I guess that's it. Okay. Point number three, an ad within an ad. I did touch on this feature a little bit in the previous point, but I do believe it deserves its own recognition. As I mentioned from the beginning, I get it. A toy company wants to sell toys. Just make it interesting, make me care. And that's what Nerf House is, right? The intent is to be an advertisement. I get it, but there's, there's an ad within this advertisement. In each Nerf House episode, there's a built-in commercial break, not an ad break where they can throw in an ad and it might be something else. No, 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 it's in the video. 
We'll be right back after these messages. It's anywhere from 15 to 30 seconds, depending on if it's an ad for the Ultra 2 or for Ultra Screamer darts. So not very long, but it's clear they're showcasing a particular product. The ads themselves aren't bad, but each Ultra 2 ad features a different NFL player showing that their favorite blaster is the Ultra 2, which is kind of weird, but then it also ends by saying that professional athletes are sold separately. And I do think that's kind of funny. For the sonic screamer darts, Julian yells again, but then obnoxious screaming is not included. It's self-aware, and I, I do appreciate that. Obnoxious screaming not included. These ads seem like something that Nerf would place on platforms like YouTube or Instagram, or heck, even run during commercial breaks on television. Nothing wrong with that, even if they're used to advertise the Nerf House series. But why include them in Nerf House videos? Isn't it weird to pause everything that's happening in the video you're watching for an ad about a blaster that's in the video that you're watching? It's like, hey, look at this thing. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. <laughs> ad within an ad. Adception. I just, it's just so weird. I don't like it. Point number four, the teams. I shouldn't have to complain about this because it's the most basic concept. There are two teams in Nerf House, orange and blue. Orange has three teammates, while blue has two. Why are the teams unequal sizes? Come on. Doesn't it make sense to have the same number of players on each team? Wouldn't that lead to better matchups or at least the perception of competition? When I was first watching, I thought Joe was a wild card player because he's always wearing a gray t-shirt. Juju and Julian are always wearing blue sweatshirts, while Christian and Jamal are always wearing orange sweatshirts. But no, Joe's always got an orange bandana on his head, so that makes sense. Seriously, why go to the trouble of matching team outfits when this is the result? He looks so out of place in the center as well. I really don't get it. You may also assume because there are teams that any house antics would be between orange and blue. Well, in episode one, uh, the orange team smears peanut butter on Julian's Ultra 2. All right, cool. God dang it! And then the only full-on battle in episode four does see the orange team take on the blue team until Julian decides to fire at literally everyone and declare himself the winner. Other than that, we really only see Joe and Christian messing with each other and they're both on orange. So I gotta ask, what's the point of having teams? Maybe just give everyone separate color shirts and tell them to go for it. It's like the teams only exist when the script requires them to. This feels like such a petty thing to rant about, but the more I think about it, the more perplexed I get. Seriously, if you establish teams, clear-cut teams at the beginning of the series, then the script should really start writing itself. Point number five, nothing happens. All of my complaints up to this point sit on the foundation of Nerve House's primary problem. Nothing happens, it's boring. There's no story to follow and there's no personality to the show or the athletes. Half the time, the guys are literally just sitting around looking bored, but with Nerf blasters. Reading in bed, eating cereal, eating peanut butter, and Nerf Ultra was there. Dang it! Watering plants, sitting in a freaking tub, and Nerf Super Soakers were there. Pouring cereal, but oops, all Ultra darts. Never seen that idea before. Is this really what you want? As long as there are five recognizable stars or athletes on screen, are you entertained? Because I'm not. You've got five well-built dudes and an endless supply of Nerf blasters and darts. So naturally, you try to make the shortest sitcom ever. Or is it a competition? And then by the end, we're asked who's going to win Nerf House, and I have absolutely no idea what winning even means in this context. The first, the final, the only battle between orange and blue shows pieced together action shots with everyone getting hit until they decide that these shots count and a winner is crowned. Looks like I won Nerf House. Winner. Where did he win? How did he win? Are these things too much to ask for. Did he win an Ultra 2? Gotta be because my Ultra 2 blaster. I should have paid attention at the beginning because rule number one was there are no rules. I guess that means there's no structure and no purpose. While Nerf House fails to impress me on many levels, I have to admit I don't find the series to be cringy. Sure, there are some moments, but most of the time it's tolerable. Good night. 
Ultra 2. Boring doesn't equate to cringy, and I mean, come on, they'd have to try really hard to include something <laughs> that could make me think otherwise. It had to be much worse. It's certainly not something that you can do in five episodes. No. I, I don't want to, no. You know about it? Who told you? I have been lying to you a little bit. There's a sixth episode. They didn't say there was, but technically there's an unofficial sixth episode. And I don't want to talk about it, but if you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. It is, uh, it's a music video. That surprise, it's called Don't Eat the Darts. And it is uh, one minute and 44 seconds of your life that you will not get back. Don't eat the darts. Don't, don't eat the darts. No, 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 uh, please don't eat the darts. I do not want those antiques. God dang it. Don't eat the darts. Don't, don't eat the darts. Have, have fun. On, on. Please don't eat the darts. It's nerf or nothing. There is so much to unpack here. Is this music? Oh my gosh, why does this exist? Also, wait a minute. Who is this guy? Yeah, the, the guy with Julian. Has he been here the whole time? Or did he just decide to show up for a day? Are you telling me we could have had even teams this whole time if this guy just showed up? Hey look, more footage. More footage that could have been used, but nope, save that for the music video. Our on-camera chemistry is terrible right now. Well, he said it, not me, wasn't me. This video makes me want to eat darts. In conclusion, Nerf House fails to deliver on almost every front. This is some of the most disappointing content I have ever seen from Nerf, and I'm not exaggerating there. Imagine if it had been good. That would have been a win for everyone, but no, and I hold Nerf to a high standard because Hasbro has basically dominated the toy blaster industry since I can remember. But if they want to call themselves the number one blaster brand and go around unironically saying it's Nerf or nothing, they gotta prove it. They gotta prove it to me, they gotta prove it to you. They can't just, meh, here's Nerf House. If anyone from Nerf or Hasbro is watching right now, hi, I'm Brett. Um, if you know that I exist, you're probably not very happy with me right now. I know I wasn't very nice on Nerf House, and you probably think I'm just a, a Nerf hater. It's not true. You wanna know what my favorite series was within the past two years? The Nerf Nation show with Zach King. I'm not joking. I, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was genuinely entertaining. The episodes still aren't too long, but they're fun. They're pleasing to watch and overall entertaining. Zack King brings a great level of energy and does an excellent job not taking himself too seriously. You can tell he's having a great time with his team. Also a giant nitro car, and I want it. I've talked enough about Nerf House for today, but I am curious to hear what you guys think. Is this the first time you've ever heard about Nerf House or have you already watched through the series? If you have and you think I'm completely wrong, uh, let me know in the comments section down below. I'd love to hear some of those arguments. They did already make a Nerf House season two. And if you'd like to hear my thoughts on that, let me know as well, because it is a little bit different than this season one. Maybe it got better, maybe it got worse. Let me know if you'd like to see the follow-up. Thank you everyone so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.